Welcome back. This is now part three of the video for assignment three. And in this part of the video, what we're going to do is we're go going to um, create the ball. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so what we need to do to create that ball, we want to set up the ball. So let's go ahead and put that ball in setup. So build ball. Okay. And so we're going to build that ball by calling it private void and build ball. Okay. So what do we want, what do we want this ball to do? Well, right now, uh, all we need to do is put that ball in the center of the screen. That's pretty easy. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and construct it. G oval ball equals to new G oval, and we're going to center it. So width divided by two. And because it always builds it from the left corner, we're going to go ahead and subtract it by its ball radius. So we can shift it over. And then comma, height, divided by 2, minus the ball radius. OK. And we also need the dimensions of that ball. So uh, it's going to be the diameter. So 2 times ball radius, comma, 2 times ball radius like that. Okay. Once we create that ball, we need to also fill it. So ball dot set filled. We're going to say that's true. And we also want to make it black. So set color. Let's make it um, black. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and add that ball. And for purposes of interacting with the other methods, we're going to go ahead and call that right here, G oval ball. Okay, which means that we technically wouldn't need that to begin with because we've already called that G oval. Okay, so by doing this, what we've created is the ball. It's going to show up in the middle of the screen, and we've created a, a variable of ball so that we can retain the uh, the information of ball okay for our purposes that we'll be using later um, the next thing that you need to do in this program is to also have the ball move so ball move is actually going to be not in setup rather we're going to use ball move in a play game so here we're going to call move ball right there and we're going to go ahead and create the method for move ball and we'll put it right next to here so private uh, void move ball okay so in this method for move ball um, what we need to do is we need to be able to create the instance of the velocity so I believe they gave us a few things to run off on uh, run off of uh, one, we have our velocities in our x and y direction, and two, uh, they want us to use something called a random generator, which is that uh, package for util. That's where we get the random generator. And usually, you would make the method, uh, you would make the formula like this, but because you want some more uh, randomness, we're going to split up the speed and the direction so that for the direction it would be actually 50-50 and for the speed it would vary from 1 to 3 because if you had done it this way um, it's going to be a little off off-sided okay so um, it's going to be unbalanced because you are not going to get a consistent 50-50 chance of getting a negative and a positive even though that's how we denoted it here but uh, it will not unless you do this game like a million times, then it will come out 50-50, but just for purposes of getting this uh, more of a 50-50 ratio, we're going to go ahead and separate the speed and the direction. And it says up here that uh, our velocity for the y will start off with a 3. So let's go ahead and call our velocities. Um, I will do that here. So we're going to call it private double vx comma vy. All right, and we're going to initiate those velocities in move ball because for each time we call move ball, we want a different velocity. Does that make sense? 
because it's a new game, so a new speed. All right, so private void move ball, and we need to call our random generator. So random generator that goes outside on our gen is equal to random generator dot get instance like that. And then we're going to go ahead and call our variables. So bx is equal to our gen next double. And that's going to be between 1.0 and 3.0. And then we're going to go ahead and call if our gen next boolean with another O, so boolean of 0 0.5 is a 50 50 chance of it occurring. Then what we want it to do is change our bx direction into the negative direction. So 50-50 of the time, we are going to uh, change the direction of the bx. And then lastly, our by is going to be set to 3, 3.0. Okay, so with that set, um, the next thing that you want to do uh, is create a while loop because we want this ball to move and so in order to keep it moving uh, we are going to move the ball but have it in a while loop so it's moving around so to move the ball we're going to call ball dot move ball dot move there we go and we're going to move it by the vx comma the vy okay so over and over again, it's going to move until this uh, statement breaks, okay? Which won't break because I didn't put anything in to break it. Um, and we come across one problem. Um, we haven't established our boundaries. So we need to go ahead to check when the ball hits the wall. So we have to check walls. So we need to create another method that will have the ball bounce off the walls. So private void uh, check walls. And to do this, um, we have to take a look at the screen. So as you can see here, um, the ball, if it touches the left wall, we want the x direction to switch. If it touches the right, we want the x direction to switch. Same with the top, we want the y direction to switch. Same with the bottom, we want the y direction to switch. Uh, by the end of the game, we want the bottom to count as a game over or a loss. But for now, in order to just make sure this program is working, we're just going to call uh, a switch. So if um, ball dot get x, because we can get the x value of the ball, is less than or equal to zero, okay then what we want this ball to do is to switch. So vx is equal to negative vx. Uh, else if, if the ball is on the other side, so ball.getx, because that's how you get the coordinate of the ball. Uh, and be careful. Get x is coordinate of the left side of the ball. You need to check if it's on the right side of the ball, because it's on the right wall. So don't forget to add the ball radius, or the diameter, really. If ball get x plus 2 times ball radius is greater than or equal to the width, then we want it, we want it to bounce back. So vx is equal to negative vx, like that. Make sure this is also in parentheses so you're talking about that whole uh, formula inside that's being compared with the width, okay? All right, um, now we gotta check the top and bottom. So else if the ball.gety is less than or equal to zero, then what we want to do with this one is to switch our by. So by will switch in terms of the sign, so it bounces. And then in the other case, else if the ball dot get y is, uh, and plus the diameter, so plus two times ball radius, is bigger than or equal to the height, then we want this guy to also bounce back, like so. Okay, so that's it. That's how you would check the walls. So we run the program to see how it works. And there we have it. Now it's blurring at the speed of light. So we don't want that, right? 
what we want to do is to pause the um, the movement by a little. So since pause is in terms of milliseconds, um, let's pick a number like 20 milliseconds. And we don't want to use a number. We want to get into the practice of actually uh, using a private static final int. So it looks like they didn't give us a delay. So we'll create one ourselves. Final int uh, time delay. We'll call this 20. All right, and so we'll refer to that time delay right inside there. So that if we ever want to change it, we just have to change the variables at the top. Okay, so when we rerun the program, it's going to slow down a bit. Oh, oh, did you just see that? Okay, what just happened there is it's bouncing off the walls, but once it gets to the bottom, it overextends itself. And you know why now, right? It overextends itself because our dimensions are off. So we got to change that. So instead of height, height minus uh, whatever we had before, if you remembered, it's uh, let's call that uh, paddle y offset. If you remember that. So now when we go back to it, it would bounce off the bottom like so. Uh, seems to be a little off, but that's okay, because anyways, as long as the ball reaches past the paddle, then it's already game over, because it's not like the paddle can actually bounce the ball if it goes past the paddle. So that should be okay, but I'm a little nitpicky. Um, I'm not happy with the way that looked, so, but you know what, it doesn't matter, because if it bounces off the bottom, it's not supposed to do it anyways, so we can get rid of that condition afterwards. So I'll just like leave it the way it is because um, we got it to do what it wanted, what we wanted to do. So for now, we're fine. Um, the next thing that we want to do is to make sure that uh, to make sure that uh, this guy right here, random origin generator appears not at the bottom but at the top with all our other variables because we want it to uh, we want to see it all in the same area so that's just etiquette so if someone else wants to read your program uh, they can see all the variables that you listed in one spot okay and any internal local variables will just be inside the methods themselves all right and so there you have it that's the end of part three and uh, I'll see you next time